then look at what other people have to face. Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Boule. Hello and welcome to Life with me, Patty Boule. I have a very special guest this evening, someone I'm really pleased to have on this show. Jamie Langton is a TV film commercial director. He is a versatile producer, director, having worked across many genres of some of UK's top TV shows. Now, this includes entertainment, reality, factual, observational, factual, entertainment, cookery, and children's comedy. Name it. Jamie <laughs> has been there. <laughs> Jamie, welcome to life. Good to see you, Patty. You know, I... I've known you for a while now, Jamie, and your success could not have come easily. No, I mean, uh, I, well, I didn't think it did. Um, and, you know, from a very young age, I was lucky and I was one of the fortunate ones who knew what they wanted to do. Uh, whereas a lot of, you know, my friends and, and, and family didn't. Mm. Um, and I kind of had that, I don't know what you call it, but I kind of thought, TV, that's that's what I want to do. Now, considering that was a black and white box in those days that sat in one corner, um, quite why it jumped out at me, I, I don't know. It's your destiny. Yeah, I kind of look back at it and, and think maybe that's what it was, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and all I know is I wanted to do that and nothing else was going to be acceptable, which was difficult. Um, <laughs> you know, coming from, you know, without trying to use excuses, but coming from London in, and Peckham in particular, yeah. there weren't very many uh, Peckham TV directors <laughs> in those days <laughs> yes. um, or aspiring TV directors. So I knew I was going to have a battle on my hands um, and uh, I, I guess some of that partly due to myself as well. Gosh, so you didn't actually have anyone in your family maybe who was in television or... <clears throat> Directing or producing? No. no, basically no. I mean, my dad was a, a, a demolition contractor. Oh, okay. So he had a, a, a big business during the sixties, uh, and but he was also a wrestler. So he kind of had that celebrity connection. Okay. Uh, and he would, you know, often do shows. Um, he would turn up on the odd TV show as well, uh, as a guest. Um, and uh, you know, he had lots of celebrity friends. So that circle, I got to know. Okay, um, was that before? But you decided you really wanted to. I decided to... long before that. Yeah, okay. that was no, that, that had no influence on what I wanted to right. do. Okay. So it was almost like an inner drive that I, I just thought this is this is my ambition or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, and 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 that's what I wanted to do, um, which in some ways was 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 good, uh, but in others it sort of scared me a bit because I th often thought at the back of my mind, okay, so what happens if that doesn't happen? What are you going to do? that's acceptable to you. Well, that fear is good. That's plan B. Uh, exactly. And I kind <laughs> of, I, I, to be honest, I think that's what kept pushing me along to do yeah. what I wanted to do. Um, and I, I just remember as a, as a, as a child um, thinking of the options that were available. You know, most of my family uh, ended up in that business with Dad. Um, and, you know, a lot of my brothers ended up in, in, doing, uh, into, in demolition. Um, I did not want to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, oh boy, how did so, your father see that? Uh, dad, dad couldn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So dad was a, a pretty tough cookie in yeah. a way from mm -hmm. that point of view, mm -hmm. um, and and his reference to, to to the entertainment industry was a, was harsh, uh, but 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 like uh, my dad. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he you yeah. know he he had a point perhaps to a certain extent, but um, that kind of didn't help it from my point of view, help the situation. Um, I just knew that I wanted to do that and I was going to do my damnedest to make that happen, really. What was your journey like getting there? Um, very difficult. Um, and I, I mean, in the 70s, I, I mean, I started taking pictures with an old box brownie camera that I bought from a jumble south for 50p. <laughs> um, and I must have been 10 when I did that. Um, and then my ambition was to get my own movie camera. Um, and I started at a very young age 
contacting the BBC, um, ITV, um, and basically being told in no uncertain terms, no, no, I don't think so. Well, what did you say to them when you contacted them? What did you have in mind to do? Some kind of, um, I just wanted a foot in the door. Okay. So I realised that, that, that I could, if I could get a foot in the door, once I got a foot in the door, you know, that's it. I, the door's open and I'm in and I'm mm -hmm. not, you're not, not going to let it close. And you're not going to let it close <laughs> behind me. You're not going to kick me out. Absolutely. So I'm going to do the best I can to, to stay here and, and, and prove myself. But it was getting that door open that was the biggest that's challenge. That's the problem, yeah. And uh, however I was going to do that, because at, at school... Um, there was, back in those days, there was nothing for the kind of career I wanted. No, yeah. I can well um, imagine, And, yes. you know, you were kind of on your own. And my school, I remember having many conversations with them, especially on these career advice lectures and whatever they do, um, where they would say, we, we don't know what to do with you. We, we mm. don't know. We, we'll start up a photography club or something within the school. <laughs> oh, bless. <laughs> I was like, no, that's not quite what I need. <laughs> So um, I think I need a little bit more help than that. <laughs> so, um, but the biggest problem was, so there was no one really to guide me and say, um, if you want to do this, you know, you need this qualification or you need to be able to do this, you need to go to university. Um, meanwhile, in the real world, outside Peckham, that was clearly happening. Mm. Um, so, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, it was tough and, uh, and, I, and that's putting it mildly. But it wasn't going to stop me. Well, if what was the first job you did? BBC, ITV. Who did you? Go uh, well, with in you? the seventies, I used to, I used to make my own films. Okay. So I made a spoof Bond film. <laughs> I made, uh, <laughs> I did parodies basically of big uh, films that were at the cinema. So there was okay. the other Bond, I called it. There was the Wimpy movie based on the Kentucky Fried movie. Uh, so there were films like that, and I used to just get a group of people, and we of actors and performers who wanted to be in front of the camera and kind of just perform. Mm -hmm. um, so my that that's where I learnt my skill of working with people, trying to get a performance out of someone. Yes. And more importantly, thinking economically about the way you would shoot something. Because I paid for it. Oh, so yes. I paid for the film mm -hmm. um, and developing and, and editing. So I did that all myself. So to this day, I still use that. Um, and and I kind of so that was my learning curve, whereas now, you know, a lot of people go to college and universities and study that. Yes. On a much more professional level, I must admit. Really, I mean, if you look at those who studied at a university at that professional level, and then look at yourself who had to learn, yeah, and train themselves, which would you prefer? Uh, given a choice, my experience, mm -hmm. absolutely, because uh, I, I, I learned so much more um, and, and it's quite ironic now because, um, you know, getting back to your earlier question, which, which was my first sort of TV stuff that, that I did, that was it because those films got shown on TV. Oh, wow. Um, and so I would push uh, as much as I possibly could, did my own publicity to get the films on TV. So I ended up being featured on various shows. Uh, like uh, Network 7, 6 o'clock show, Janet Street Porter show, and they would show clips and if not entire, the film's only three or four minutes long, some mm -hmm. of them, um, and give me, one was shown to David Putnam on uh, Janet Street Porter show, and I did two of documentaries. I'm going back into the 70s here. So, you know, from that and that kind of feedback and the kind of exposure they got on TV, um, you know, I, that, that just gave me a, a bit of a boost to think, okay, you mustn't give up. You mustn't give up. Absolutely. I think that's, that's a brilliant story. I didn't know that's how you, you came up. But you must have, there must have been barriers because I know how, especially, you know, the big companies in show business can be a close shop. It's very difficult to get in because those who are there kind of nod you out, they don't want yeah. you in. And those, how did you break that, you know, those kind of barriers? To this day, I... I, it was just persistence, to be honest with you. Yes, I mean, in the 70s, when I did try and get into uh, TV companies, uh, it was a union thing. You couldn't get in. Uh -huh. So unless you were part of the union, forget it. And they didn't want to take anyone on like myself. Uh, the BBC, um, when I went to go and see the BBC, um, I didn't quite have the right qualifications. Uh, it was often pointed out to me I hadn't been to Oxford or Cambridge. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. on several several occasions, and then when I did, I often I, I did also get um, 
a lot of discrimination, really, in some ways, because I was a, you know, come from Peckham. You know, you're not quite the right kind of that is, that material, is, really, for a director, are you? <laughs> Which was very demoralising, because I oh. thought, well, hang on a second, I've just done 15 films. OK, I'm amateur, whatever you want to call them. But you shouldn't just dismiss that experience. But they were basically saying, um, you know, you know the, the industry was saying, but you haven't done that. Yes. So that's not the route we want. We're not interested in that yes. personal experience, which, to be fair, is, I guess, you know, understandable. No, it's not. Because, to be honest with you, I, <laughs> in the 70s, I, um, I was living not far from Dennis Waterman and his wife at the time, and they had one of the magazines, Home and House and Gardens, or one of those, come and do up his house. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of refurbished the kitchen or something yeah and i thought that would make good television yeah. so i wrote it all down sent it as you did in those days yeah sent the ideas and everybody wrote back saying oh no 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 it's not the sort of thing we're looking mm. at now six months later everyone was doing it mm -hmm. so i think okay i mean sometimes you think all right i can understand because i did ask one person i said how come I could send in an, I send in an idea, yeah. which is, there's no idea that's original, but in this case, for television, it's pretty original. And you come back saying no, and then six months later, and I had a very good explanation, actually, which I accepted. Maybe I'm just too gullible, but I did. I think it makes sense. He said, you know, you send, you, you send in your paper, and we read it. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we've got so many things going on. Mm -hmm. And it's not exactly, it doesn't fit into what we're doing. At that point. At that point. And then he says, maybe three months later, somebody says, you know, we ought to do, think, yeah. yes, yeah. I know, yeah. because it's there. Yeah. And I thought, okay, yeah. I get that. And and that is a very common problem, which mm. to this day, why I, I don't tend to send in ideas anymore, <laughs> because um, that's, which is quite sad to admit, but it's just because... No, Why should it's, you it's, kind of do that if someone else is going to effectively take the idea um, and 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 put it to who or whichever production company maybe they want to, to right. produce it? They change the title. It, exactly, or and, and that's all yeah. you have to do. So, yeah. so it's it's if you don't want to be disappointed, don't don't play the game. Yeah. Is my view on that. Yeah. Uh, but you mustn't let that stop you. Um, no. I think, you know, uh, moving forward and and not you know not giving up, which is very difficult absolutely it is i mean like program like this i you know went to the big ones because all i get every year for six years i'm a celebrity get me out of here and i go no i don't want to do it mm. it's giving the wrong message to young people and another year even this year i went no take me off your list mm. <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough to do this program. but that's the way tv is now isn't it i know in the, it that, is that's if there's a if there's a, a slot let's put some celebrities in there yeah. and let's see if we can you know um and having done a lot of directed a lot of reality tv i know you have that's um, where i was going yeah. but, but but going back to your point of getting started my and i must tell you this very quickly the the the, the way i ended up getting in the industry yes because when i left school i ended up at tesco's i ended up with an advertising company and I was just drifting and thinking there is nothing in this world that's going to, to, to stop me from doing this. I have to find a way. There must be a way. And uh, at that point, um, a lot of friends and family saying to me, don't, you know, just accept it's not going to happen. Um, oh. Which were kind of was, was very tough, but yeah. thinking, oh, right, okay, thanks for the help. <laughs> but um, it, it was, you know, give up on that. But in the end, I wrote to Bill Cotton, who was the managing director of the BBC. And this is going back uh, about 84, no, 85. Um, and I was so desperate, and, and my dad had died in the January. Mm. Um, I just bought a new flat with a with a girlfriend at the time. Um, I'd been because of dad's funeral and arranging all that. You know, the company, the advertising company I'd been with, which I hadn't been for very long, let me go. Mm. So it was looking a bit bleak. So I thought, well, what have I got to lose? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just send this letter to Bill Cotton. I had a, a scrapbook that thick of all these press cuttings of me and TV shows that I'd done, um, and said, look, come on. I'm only, I'll clean the toilets, I'll do anything you want. I'll do the post. Just you know, let me in. Just give me a foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And then heard nothing. And, and then suddenly out of the blue, uh, got invited down to Broadcasting House, um, where I got told again by the BBC, oh, yes, but um, you've still not got the right qualifications. You're not, you're not quite BBC. You're not quite the right yeah. material, are uh -huh. you? Mm -hmm. So I thought, 
hang on a minute, I've just had a letter from your boss because I had a letter by then saying, you know, come in, you know, you should be okay. So I wrote back to him again and just said, look, I've been back and this is what's been said to me again. You know, I'm very disappointed. Um, that was the last I heard. Uh, my scrapbook came back from TV Centre and I then got a call two weeks later to go down to BBC Ealing Studios um, and basically become a film assistant. And I'll never forget being in there and just being told, you know, you, you've, you've got this job. Um, and I didn't believe it. I absolutely did not believe it. And I actually said to the guy three times, so you're actually saying to me, I, I've got the job. Yes, I've told you three times. You're not going to say I'm not quite right. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're so about? used to hearing that. I know. <laughs> what are you talking about? But of course, since then, I once I got in, sure enough, I I wasn't I wasn't going to go anywhere, and I I kind of did everything I could. And within a year, I was directing for the BBC. Gosh, and since then, I tell you what, you have done so much. I was looking at the list of things you've done. Oh, I have to point out, you're going to laugh at this: the twirly woos. <laughs> yes. I'm yeah. afraid because of my grandson, I love oh, so you know the, the Twirly Woods. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But it's animation. And live action. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. incredible. That must be tough. I've, I, I sat there. I didn't know you were involved when I saw it. I'm thinking, how did they do that? Yeah. But basically, you uh, every single frame is, is thought out. So every frame you kind of have the Twirly Woods interacting with the live action. That's right. Um, you, you are building a plate shop. So if uh, you're shooting a scene um, and you've got the characters mm -hmm. in, um, you're effectively shooting. If the characters were appearing from behind this chair, that's right. Yeah. Um, you know, you're shooting that chair, for example, with three puppets just as a reference point. You take them out, shoot the chair empty, and then eventually take the chair out and shoot that. So uh, gradually, you are shooting everything in layers. That's a lot of work. It is. Yeah. I was going and to you really say. Have I to mean, think about that. Good heavens, because the Twirly Woos, it's, I don't think it's the first to use that kind, but it was just so obvious because of the interaction with the hu yeah. humans. That yeah. was, the I bit I liked was clever. directing the cast, directing the live action, you know, and, and, and just the comedy, basically. Absolutely. And, and doing that. I, I mean, think it, it's it was slow, it, I felt it slowed down when you were, you were doing the animated, you know, the bits that were going to be animated, because it was just like that was just taking forever. Whereas I'm used to doing reality stuff. Like yeah. educating Essex, where I've got 65 cameras, yes. and you shoot, you know, in seven weeks, 10 hours a day, and you're literally cutting, literally probably f half hour, 40 minutes of telly every day. Good heavens! Um, out of that kind of 10 hours. Wow. Okay, and you did the only ways Essex. Yes. Yeah, for ITV. Yes. Yep. Oh boy, what was that like? I really enjoyed it. Really? Um, for me, it was it was a different form of reality TV. Because on again, like the, the the reality stuff I've done, such as the hotel mm -hmm. and and educating Essex, mm -hmm. you are stuck behind a, a desk where you're cutting cameras and you've got all the monitors in front of you. So you're following the action, um, and you don't have any contact with with who you're filming. Oh, okay, okay. So you're letting stories happen, and you're just literally you've got no control over that. Whereas in Essex, you kind of have to a certain extent because you know it's it's scripted reality, um, mm. and you know the cast were amazing, um, and it was a, a, a it was a well organised production. Okay. Um, and I I like that side of it where you're you're having more contact with the talent. With than, the talent. Yeah. And I I like that. That's why I got in the business. I tell you what, there was I read somewhere, you know, you directing sixty five cameras. Yes. How do you direct sixty five cameras? By breaking things down in your head. By breaking down areas, uh, for example, my monitor bank, for example, on, on Essex, where I'd have 65, literally the output of 65 cameras. Um, and, you know, that's a huge amount. It so, is. And especially if you're trying to, if there's one that's a classroom and there's another one that's the hallway, the headmaster's office. Um, so, you know, and, and they're not all sequential. So there's not necessarily, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mm -hmm. So that could be camera 48, 32, 24. I can't remember why. It's a long time ago. But I would literally corner off the rooms i tape them off on the monitor stack i'll get the engineers to right that's the red that's the red assembly read that that's the kitchen i'd mm -hmm. go in the kitchen so mm -hmm. in my head i could see and then just get used to like you know just rehearsing something as much as you can yes and in your head knowing that that's camera 26 24 25 right bang but, but but with essex you're shooting you could be shooting two stories at one time 
So you're basically, you've got two streams. So okay. you've got your 65 cameras twice. Oh. So there could be something going on upstairs that you're looking at that and you're cutting those on that stream, stream A. And the stream B down here could be down in the headmaster's office. There's something else kicking off down there. So you're kind of breaking it down in your head the whole time, plus 21 radio mics on pupils <laughs> in a screaming school. But, but that's, 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 you know, and that's no big thing. There's loads of people who do that. And, and, and it's just like anything, once you've got used to it. For someone like me, I can, when I read it, I went, <laughs> 65 watts? <laughs> and it's okay. interesting now, I kind of teach, I'm a tutor. That is, is quite, true, you do, don't you? Which is quite ironic now, considering that, you know, when I first tried, it was like, not quite right for us. And then, you know, the nice very courses I tried to get on, now I'm nectarine. You see, talk about destiny. Because you've gone through yes, all yeah, of yeah. this. Yeah. And now you're actually giving it to young people. Yeah. It makes you the best teacher because what I, I don't like is people who actually go and get technical training. Mm. And then you're only passing down, what, fifth? third sometimes tenth knowledge yes yeah, yeah, yeah. whereas in yeah. your case you're passing down first knowledge and for me that's important you're passing down experience you have been through you know the difficulties they're going to face you're not mm. just saying to them okay this is what you do to pass off with you yes and no. that's what most people do and that's what i've enjoyed getting that feedback from the students as well i've just finished a course for the uh, running some courses for the nfts for the grads Doing their, who are out there literally right now doing their films um, and just been able to have that and getting the feedback from them, you know, some would have been out and they've said, thank you so much. Absolutely. You know, that's that's really useful and you've helped me out no end. And I just think, well, if nothing else in life, that's you've not, done that's, that. I've done that. Jamie, you know, the thing is that I tell you what, that was, I have such a long list of things you've done <laughs> that I'm looking at them going, there's no way I'm going to cover any of this because there's so many of them, but you've done amazing things. But one thing I have to say, which I know about you, and you'll be you know, glad, I hope, that I shared this. And I want to say thank you anyway for really coming to join me. It's been such a joy speaking to you. And for you out there, Jamie says do not give up. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Mm. Not family, not friends. It's your decision. You want to do something and you, you feel it there. Go for it. It's not going to be easy. Don't expect it to be easy. Because if it's difficult, it's much more fun when you get there. And if it's easy, forget it. It's not going to last very long. But just bear that in mind. Anyone who says you can't, ignore them. Just go for what you know you can do. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>